Here are the most X files worthy experiences people have ever had. Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. When I was 12, I spent the night at a friend's house. We were up late chatting, falling asleep, listening to some music, Hotel California, and suddenly the music stopped. A bright blue light shined into the bedroom window, lit the room up, then dissipated. Hotel California resumed like nothing happened. We were frozen, dumbfounded, and freaked out, getting lots of chills and feeling weird. Did you see that? I reluctantly got out of bed to peek outside, nothing there but an empty parking lot by a wooded area. I looked at the clock, it said 2.14. For the next couple years, it became somewhat of an urban legend among my friends. We'd stay up until 2.14 at each other's house and dare something to happen like that again. Lots of fun, scaring ourselves, but nothing happened. It just became known as 214, and we'd joke about it whenever we saw that it was 214. Two years later, I was at a different friend's house, up late, watching movies in the living room, hot dog the movie. It was over, and we shut off the TV and were just chatting like normal, falling asleep. Suddenly, a bright white light shined into the living room window, lighting up the place, then dissipating, just like the blue light from two years before. I immediately was struck with fear. Did you see that? My friend replied, yeah. I was filled with dread as I turned over to get a view of the VCR to see what time it was, my body covered in chills with anticipation. It was 2.14. My whole body was covered with shivers, my eyes watering, just freaking out. I already knew I didn't need to get up to look out the window, my friend's backyard is just all woods. Nothing could be back there. Suffice to say, with two different witnesses to go along with myself, 214 was a confirmed real thing in my life and I've been haunted by it ever since. Nothing like it has happened since, but it sure did color my adolescence and make me intrigued and fascinated by all things paranormal, unexplainable, weird, fantastic, etc. It was no surprise I became a huge X-Files fan. My wife calling my name, nothing unusual about that, except that I did not hear it with my ears as I was listening to Led Zeppelin's in my time of dying on the stereo, and it was cranked up. I heard it in my mind. I walked to the bathroom as I knew my wife was taking a bath. I found her face down in the water, she was unconscious, having suffered an epileptic seizure. Fortunately, I found her in time. Oh boy this still wigs me out. I was driving back from a 16-hour road trip to see family and I was about an hour from home. The whole trip was just four days long, so I was pretty sleep deprived and had been driving by myself with very few stops. I was cruising on the highway and in front of me was a tunnel through the mountains. I hadn't driven through a tunnel on the way out of the state, so I became alarmed I had been driving the wrong way. I checked my GPS, but had no signal on my phone. Unusual, the whole trip I normally have signal. I immediately took the exit before the tunnel to get my bearings. It was a big circle exit and at the end was a four-way stop with a flashing traffic light. I took a left and the only thing around was a small 50s style diner and a parking lot. All the lights were off in the diner, obviously closed, but the parking lot was full of cars, like packed. There were old classic cars and new cars, but there was not a single soul to be seen. It was around 3 AM, so I didn't expect a crowd, but there wasn't a hotel or homes nearby just a closed diner and parking lot full of cars. I didn't even slow down. I freaking noped out of there so hard. Pulled a UA in the street and drove back to the on-ramp to the highway. Once I was back on the highway, I drove for about 30 minutes until the GPS came back. I was actually pretty close to home. My friend and I once drove back to try and find the diner but we never could find it, or the tunnel. I like to think that if I would have pulled into the parking lot my car might have been added to the collection and no one would have seen me again. When I was 19 and my best friend was 20, we are nearly 40 now, we were driving back to my house after visiting someone at work. We were on a somewhat busy road. It was getting dark, but wasn't quite dark yet. There were street lights and business lights everywhere, so visibility was still great. This road was three lanes in each direction and there was a concrete median dividing the traffic. I was in the left lane next to the median, and a traffic light was coming up. 
I saw a man standing in the median a good way before where the crosswalk for the light would be. It instantly made me nervous. As soon as I thought that, he stepped out to cross the street. My best friend and I both instantly braced for impact as I slammed on my brakes. We went through him. We didn't hit him and because there was a car to my right I wasn't able to swerve out of my lane to avoid hitting the man. I looked in my rear view, and there wasn't anyone there. I had come to a complete stop, and we physically turned around in our seats to see how he had jumped out of the way. There was no one there and no way he could have ran off or hidden anywhere that fast. We both turned toward to each other and almost in sync asked each other, did you see that man? We both saw the same thing. A man, couldn't describe his face, but it was a man's form and both of us remember being confused as to why he was wearing a white robe, and both being terrified that he stepped out in front of us, like he was committing suicide. I had a baby in the back seat, she was about 3 months old. She had been crying during the drive and went silent when we came to a screeching stop, which added to the weirdness of it all. We still bring it up occasionally and neither of us can come up with an explanation for what we saw other than something supernatural. Also, we both saw the white cloth fling across the windshield, like he was hitting it. But there was no impact, nothing, it was like he went through the car. I was driving down the highway about 3 am when a semi-truck pulled alongside me. Then swerved into my lane, running me off the road and down a very steep incline. I remember going over I gunned the engine, why I don't know, but as I was going downhill I kept telling myself to step on the brake. I couldn't move. It was like someone was holding my foot down. Then I heard this voice tell me okay now you can step on the brake. Neither my infant daughter nor myself were injured and the only damage to the car was a hole in the oil pan. Both the tow truck and the highway patrol officer were incredulous that I didn't roll the car. They told me if I had tried to stop any sooner than I did I would have probably killed us both. This happened when I was either 8 or 9. It involves a weird incident with my twin brother, and for a long long time afterwards I thought I had dreamt it. So it was early evening after the sun had gone down, and I was downstairs in the living room watching TV. My brother was up in our bedroom reading. At some point, this really uncomfortable feeling came over me, and I thought my brother needed my help. I go upstairs, and our bedroom at the time was at the end of the hallway. As I walked down the hallway, and I'm standing right outside our door and right as I go to knock I hear a voice say, I have to leave now. He opened the door said, I think someone was outside the window talking to me, but the only thing I heard was that they had to leave. We were both creeped out and told our mom what happened, but nothing ever came of it. For a long long time, I thought I had dreamt this, but a few years ago, my brother asked me, hey, remember that time when we were kids and someone was talking to me through the bedroom window? Remember how he left right when you came in the room? What the hell was that? Because he remember it exactly the way I do I'm convinced this really happened. I was 6 and my brother was 10. We had a 21 year old foster brother who lived with us off and on. One night, I woke up to see him standing in the doorway of my room, checking on me. I said his name in a questioning voice. He said, it's okay, go back to sleep. Around the same time, my brother woke up in tears. He said he'd had a dream about a knight standing on a hill, and it made him feel very sad. Turns out our brother died in a car crash that evening. When I was in high school, a guy and I got into an argument. He sucked me in the jaw, and I started to fall to the floor. When I hit the floor, I instantly transported to a dinner table at which I was an adult. There was a woman sitting across from me, with a toddler boy and a preteen girl. I got a good look of my surroundings, a relatively modern house, with what looked like two floors. I felt like I belonged here, like I had some sort of emotional connection with all the people in the room, especially the kids. Then, the woman asked me a question. When I opened my mouth, I threw up all over the table and woke up in a stretcher in an ambulance. Hours later, I found out I just had a minor concussion. For a while, I felt like I left a part of my life behind even if it was only for a bleak moment in that world. To this day, I can still clearly remember all their faces and what the house looked like. My cousin and I both remember a room that apparently doesn't exist. When we were both around 10, my cousin was having family problems, and my mom invited her to stay with us while it got sorted out. 
It was pretty fun, kind of like having a temporary sister. We ended up talking about it a few years ago, reminiscing about the weird things we would do together and some of the memories that stood out the most, among them the night we stayed up laughing at my golden retriever, who kept trying to steal my pillow off the bottom bunk when we were trying to get to sleep. Only problem was, we didn't have a dog, and I never had a bunk bed. For whatever reason, I'd never considered how little sense the memory made. Thinking maybe she was just going along with the story, I asked her what color the bed frame was. She thought about it for a second and then answered red. She was right. According to my mom, we never stayed over at anyone else's house, and even if we had, I still remember what her friend's houses looked like. None of them had red bunk beds. I still have no idea what happened. I was working production for a TV show and was way overworked, like 14 to 16 hour days with no days off between. I had handed off a pair of prop glasses, face glasses, not cups, to my assistant in the studio and never saw nor thought about the prop glasses after that. I drag myself home and crawl in for my like 4 hours of sleep, and fall asleep. About an hour after I fell asleep, a different coworker called me because the prop glasses didn't make it to the studio. I answered the phone in real life, but I didn't wake up and instead, kept dreaming while talking on the phone. As soon as I pick up, before he says anything, I say, in real life, but in a dream to me, you're calling about the glasses. Hang on a second, I'm going to go look for them, and from his standpoint, I'm quiet for about a minute. On my end, it seems like I've just popped into the empty work studio. Because in my dream I'm thinking, this is a dream, so I can just pop to the studio and look for them. I'm usually a lucid dreamer. The lights are on but there are more shadows than there should be and whenever I try to touch something, my hand goes right through like a ghost. I'm looking around the studio and I see the prop glasses under a roll of leather, mostly hidden from view. I go back to the phone and say, okay, I just looked, they're on the back fabric cutting table under a roll of leather. He has no idea that I'm not awake, that I'm dreaming the whole thing, and drives back to the studio where he finds the glasses exactly where I said they'd be. I'd chalk it up to subconscious, but after I passed the glasses off to the assistant, I went out shopping for supplies and hadn't gone in the room the glasses were at all, so there's no way I could have just seen them there or seen where the assistant put them. Because after I handed them to her, I was never in the same room as the glasses. Weirdest thing that's ever happened to me. There are two, and if I told people who know me this, they would just laugh and think I was pulling their leg. When I was a little kid, I could see into the hallway that connected my room to the house. It was a short hallway, maybe 8 feet long. I just happened to wake up for whatever reason and an orb of light shot down the hallway, literally in a flash. It was so fast, all I could tell was it was an orb of light. At first, I thought it was a reflected car headlight or something, but we live way out in the country and there were no cars in the driveway. Plus there was no way light could reflect back into that hallway. Three walls of the house are embedded in the hill, very energy efficient. The second was about eight years ago. I had a job as a security guard in a hundred plus year old building. A cop had been shot to death on the stairs 60 years ago, and the stairs are about six feet from my watch desk in the center of the middle floor of this building. We were open until midnight each night, and usually no one came in, but the staff sometimes worked late. So when I heard someone walking down the stairs, huge wooden stairwell that terraces and splits to go up another level, I didn't really think anything of it. The footsteps stop at my desk, so I close my shift report and look up. Nothing, no one, no thing, no change, nada. I thought I was hallucinating due to lack of sleep, so I played along with my delirium. I went back to filling out my report. Otto Lark I said, I have no idea what you're looking to do, but we're both stuck here. If you don't mind, I have a report to fill out, please excuse me. About 10 seconds later, the steps started away from me going back up the stairs. I was terrified, way too scared to actually look back up. But after that, I never had another issue in the building. Weird. Was I freaking out? Or did I crack up a 60 year dead cop ghost? Who knows, really? Six years ago, I was hanging out with my siblings in our yard during a clear, sunny day around high noon, and I suddenly caught something moving in the sky out of the corner of my eye. When I turned to get a better look, I couldn't reconcile what the heck I was seeing. It was a metal cube just, gliding through the air pretty high up. 
I proceeded to absolutely lose my mind and my sib saw it as well before it disappeared behind some trees. We ran to the other side of the trees, but it was already gone. Still creeps me out to think about. We did live right next to a military base, so make of that what you will. Thing had all the aerodynamics of a literal brick though. Nothing too crazy, but definitely creeped my wife and I out. We have a Wii. The sensor bars on the TV stand directly in front of the TV, as is anyone's. We don't have the cord wrapped up or anything, it just hangs behind the TV in a jumble. One night, we were watching TV cuddling on the couch, when suddenly, the Wii sensor bar literally flies across the room until it got to the end of its length and fell to the floor, like someone had grabbed it and chucked it across the room. We could find no explanation for this whatsoever. We had a cat and a dog at the time, but cat was sleeping in another room, and dog was on the couch with us. We did have several birthday cards on top of the TV on display and one of them was on the ground, so the only thing I could think was that somehow we missed the card falling and it hit the cord and viola. I tried for 10 minutes to throw that card as hard as I could at that cord, and it didn't even move the bar from its place on the TV stand. Eventually, we just chalked it up to WTF and moved on, but it was definitely weird. I was digging a grave for a past on pet in the woods behind my house. I leaned on my shovel to stop for a break. I saw some kind of animal dart in front of me and leaned forward to look at it closely. It had vanished. Next thing I knew, I woke up lying on the ground and for some reason didn't worry about it. I just got up and began digging again. It was a hot summer in the mountains, so when I got weak and exhausted a little later, I figured I was getting heat exhaustion. So I went back to my mom's house to cool off. She freaked out because I was covered in blood. I had a big skip mark cut on the very top of my scalp, like something very sharp had skipped across my head like a skipping stone. It was in the middle of a property that backs to a big multi-county lake a mile or two back, and on other sides was just dense forest my family owned. No idea what it was. Let me preface this with my morning routine, wake up at 4.30 am, out the door by 5.15 am, clock in at work 5.50 am. Never fails unless major traffic incident on the highway. Anyhow, one morning this past August, I am out the door as usual, minimal traffic on the road. Boss calls halfway through my commute, hey, you coming in? And I say, yeah, why do you ask? Boss, well, it's 6.30 am and you usually call if you're going to be late. I look at my dashboard and yup, it's 6.30 AM. Somewhere between leaving my door and getting on the road, I lost about one hour. We're all convinced something is going on in the flat above the one my parents have lived in since 2002. For starters, all of us, me, my siblings, our parents, as well as some of our neighbors, occasionally heard furniture being dragged across the floor when no one was currently living there. Sometimes, we'd hear the footfalls of a running child as well. There is also the fact that in the years since we moved there, two different married couples lived there, both divorced within a year. A third couple came the brink of divorce to the point where they stopped living together for a while. She went to her parents' home I think and he also went to stay somewhere else. Apparently in their time away, they mended things, and after hearing stories about that flat, decided to move out. No idea if they're still together as of now. Actually before I moved out in 2009, a couple was remodeling it, apparently spent a ton of money on it, but their relationship fell apart and they never got married. I remember spending the night with my mom at this one farmhouse near where my grandparents lived. I remember the exterior and interior, and we used to actually drive past it every single time we traveled to visit my grandparents. Problem is nobody else remembers, says we never knew the people who lived there. Years ago when I was home from college, I saw that house for sale online. What got me was one, it was exactly like I remembered in the inside being, and two, the house had never changed owners, so it had never been up for sale in my lifetime. The only explanation is that my mom was a drug addict when I was younger. We all claim and state she never ever did drugs in front of us or brought us with her to pick them up or anything. But it's the only explanation I have, that my mom knew the people there, we spent the night, but she had to maintain we never ever knew them. There's no proof, but how the heck could I remember that house so vividly? In my hometown area, 
There is a ghost story about a large gray bull that roams the local farms and bellows when seen only to vanish into thin air. When I was a boy in the scouts, I heard that story at a meeting and it made my blood run cold and gave a distinct taste of salt in my mouth. One of my earlier memories was being in the bottom of our fields at home and walking back uphill towards our house, I looked up and in front of me was a gigantic grayish blue bull standing between me and the house. I had never seen it before and we didn't have cows, so when it bellowed I turned tail and ran down through the field. When I looked back behind me, in a wide open field with nowhere to go, it was gone. My grandmother didn't believe me of course, but years later, she was our den mother, and when that story was being told I looked up at her across the room and she was already looking at me and white as a ghost. Background. There's a compound near where I grew up that is a, supposedly decommissioned, AT&T Cold War Communications Center. It sits at the end of a dead-end road isolated from any houses nearby. On the outside it looks like a small, mundane two-story building. Nothing exciting at all, until you find out the building is actually many stories deeper. The entire building rests on a bed of springs to absorb shock from explosions and features an underground parking structure adjacent. Over the years, there have been theories that it was a missile silo, UFO research center, and something about a dark cloud full of lightning hovering just above it on an otherwise clear day. The X-Files part, prior to decommission, you could drive down that road until you almost reached a guard station. I say almost because doing so resulted in being engulfed in floodlights with a military-type security team armed with assault rifles demanding you turn around immediately. As far as I know, no one to this day knows what really went on there or what the inside looks like. Driving south down a back road parallel to a bunch of farm fields that end about 3 or 4 miles at a heavy pine tree line and the road curves hard to the left, east. It was about 8 p.m. when I was on my way home from work so the sun was setting to my right, west. I was probably listening to music just zoning out waiting to get home when just past the tree line, I saw this smallish orange ball of light rise up from behind the trees pretty slowly, and came to a hover about one or two finger thicknesses above the treetops from where I was. Instantly I'm thinking this isn't the sun, because when I looked to my right, the sun was setting. Now my eyes are glued to this thing, and the whole time I'm hoping my car isn't going to mysteriously shut down either. But while I'm thinking that this orange ball is getting bigger and turning yellow, while another smaller ball of orange light starts rising up next to the first one, and the second begins to get bigger and turn yellow as well. I can't believe what I'm seeing and don't think anyone else will either all the while trying to make sense of it. These two yellow balls of what I assume are light are now hovering above the tree line that I'm heading reluctantly toward. But once the second had matched the first in shape size and hovering height, they both just seemed to move south as they got smaller and smaller until I couldn't see them past the horizon. There was no sound that I could hear from it or them either. Military VTOL or otherwise, I still really want to know what it is. I personally think it was something hovering up to takeoff level, being in a forest that's really the only way, and the color plus size change was the engines warming up before it or they finally left. 